Hey, it's Coop here. And today I'm going to talk about one of the most important programs that a lot of us can run in our gym, and that is a kids program. This is super duper important, not just because it's a great way to build culture and community, not just because it's a great revenue stream for your gym, but also because this is one of the best ways that we as gym owners can have an impact on the next generation. Kids who learn to love fitness early tend to pursue it throughout their lives. And if we give them a bunch of different options and things that they might love, they'll probably stick with it. We'll produce the next generation of happier, healthier adults. And so I love running kids programs at Catalyst, but I'm not the guy to do it. I have coaches that do it for me, and these coaches are educated by our friends and partners at the Brand X Method. So if you download this guide, um, which you can do for free at gymownersunited.com, you can walk through this with me. I'm going to be giving you some specific examples from the guide that I've used at Catalyst to successfully grow my kids program, and you can do too. This is very simple stuff that really revolves around asking the kids and asking the parents and making connections in the kid's life to grow your program. So let's start with uh, exactly where we want to go with younger kids. We're going to divide up the strategies in this guide between younger kids and older kids. And it doesn't really matter where you put that boundary in your program. So you might put the, the boundary in your program to be like mine, which is eight to 12, which we call junior varsity, or it might be uh, 13 and up, which is what we call our varsity program. And you might have different options for how kids progress. You might use ages, whatever. You might have a younger program. We don't do that at Catalyst anymore, but for a lot of people, it's a, a great idea. Okay, so let's start with the younger kids. So these are like the eight to 12 year olds. The first thing that we like to do at Catalyst about three times a year is take uh, the kids that we currently have and find out their connections. So a lot of these kids will play other sports and maybe they'll attend our program in their off season or maybe they'll keep going through their regular season. At this age, you wanna build the most well-rounded athlete, but that means you can also connect with the athletes on their team from other sports. So for example, if your kid is playing football, uh, you can ask, the kid, you know, what other teams are you playing for? And they might say, I'm playing football, or they might also say that they're on the swim team, hockey team, lacrosse team, skiing team, whatever. And then you can say like, well, how many other kids are on your team? And, and then you can say, what is the name of your coach? Now you might have to go to the parent to answer these questions and that's totally fine. So you would say like, Hey, who's, who's Jimmy's coach on the swim team or, or who's Billy's coach on the football team. And they'll say, Oh, uh, their coach this year is named, you know, Jill Simons. And so you say, do you have a contact number for Jill? Now, in our case, because we've been doing this for a long time, we know a lot of the coaches in town. And that means they sometimes hit us up for sponsorship. But also sometimes um, we'll know exactly who Jill Simons is. Maybe we've met her before. So we can reach out to Jill. We can say, hey, Jill, uh, you know, we've, we've got little Jimmy here at our gym. He's having a great time. And it made me think to reach out to you and ask, do you want to run a fun challenge for the kids on your team? Uh, now, this could be at the end of the season. It could be, you know, preseason if you want to. It could be midseason, whenever you want to. But a lot of teams will try to wrap up their season with a party. And so for us, it's just a natural, uh, easy opportunity to say, hey, do you want to bring your kids in for your team party here? You know, bring some pizzas or whatever, and we'll just have like a fun little challenge. And then what happens is um, the kids come in. Their parents bring them, they sign a waiver, the parents hang out if they want to, the kids have an amazing time, and it's really, really easy for you to just give out information on your kid's program there. Similarly, another great example is to host a birthday party. Now, if you're just starting your kid's program, this is a very quick and simple way to get a lot of kids. It also tends to be a lot of work. And so your coaches are going to have to spend extra time on cleanup. It's not something that we do anymore. But when we were trying to kickstart our kids program, running two or three birthday parties made a lot of sense for us. So what happens is uh, you pick out a kid from the group, uh, you notice that their birthday is coming up, you say to their parent, hey, have you ever thought about hosting Sally's birthday party at the gym? They would probably say that would be amazing. We can have like a, a ninja course challenge, whatever, you know, we can do fun workouts, uh, who can hold themselves up on the bar longest, you know, you know what to do. And then you say, okay, well, hey, let's let's set it up. And so on the invites, they say, click here, catalystgym.com, and they have to sign the waiver in advance. And if you don't want to do it that way, just tell them, like, bring their parents too. And you can sign a waiver once you get here. Every kid has to have a waiver signed. 
And that way you've also got parent contact info. You add them to your email list. You talk about your kids' programs. And when every kid leaves, you hand them a thanks for coming. Like a, they, they used to hand out loot bags. You are giving them like basically a postcard in the loot bag that says, here's more information. Now, look, if you don't have time to make these postcards, don't worry about that. Just getting the kids in at this age for a free trial will usually sell the program. I just like to have a follow-up to make sure that the parent knows exactly what to do next. Okay, next, bring a buddy. Now, so this is this works for adults too, but at this age group, if you want to um, just get more kids like the great kids that you already have, you can run a bring a buddy session. So, hey, kids, next Saturday, we're going to do a fun event. Invite your best friend, your little brother, your older brother, your girlfriend, ha ha, you know, whatever, to this fun event. And you can bring one person with you. It has to be somebody who you think would love this and make sure that their parent signs a waiver. Okay, you can invite any one person that you want to. And that's it. Okay, make it extra fun. Make sure that they're bringing um, like the right kids or whatever and have them do like partner challenges. Okay, another great way is to reward a class. So I have a lot of teachers at my gym, you might too. And they're always doing these fundraisers and like food drives and all this kind of stuff. You can have any challenge you want. It could be in the classroom, a math challenge. It could be uh, we're saving up for our school trip. It could be we're, we're collecting donations for cancer. Any of these deserve a reward and you can be that reward. So you can say to the school or to the teacher or even to the parent, hey, um, we know Sally's class is doing this pennies from heaven fundraiser. That's a really popular local one where people donate all their pennies and they fill a bathtub. What we'd like to do is we'll donate something. So if uh, whatever class collects the most pennies, they will get a free two hour fun day at the gym. And so the school board will set up the bus, they'll bring them over to the gym and you'll just run like this two hour session. You'll collect all the kids' names, of course. You'll send them a thank you card afterward, or you'll contact their parents. You'll have their parents' emails from the waivers and you'll send them information on your kids' program, okay? Those are four great ways. And what you'll notice is that you have to have two things. You have to know the kid, number one, and you have to overtly make the invitation or the offer. So a lot of those methods were just an excuse to make that invitation. Now let's talk about older kids. So these are preteens and teens. And these kids rely a lot less on what their parents want them to do and more on like what their friends are doing. So social proof goes a lot further. One thing is every kid that comes into your preteens and teens program, every kid that comes into all your programs, you should have a photo release on their waiver. This is so important. And I'm sure your insurance company has already told you this. Brand X would have told you this. But the bottom line is sometimes there are kids whose pictures should not be appearing on social media. Maybe they're in a divorce situation. Maybe they're a foster kid. You don't know what's going on at home. And so you want to make sure that parents understand there is a photo release on your waiver and why. In fact, I'll go so far as to say we are so big on media at Catalyst that if a parent doesn't want their kid's picture to appear on social, we'll say to the parent, look, there's a chance it might slip in. This might not be the right gym for you. And that stinks for everybody. But the reality is I would rather have that conversation than just to say, oh, yeah, sorry, your kid's picture showed up on Instagram last night and like your ex saw it. Okay, you don't want to have that conversation. So show them off on social. Usually this is not an issue. 99% of the time, it's never going to come up, but I wanted to raise that point. What we do is instead of me taking pictures of the kids doing stuff, which is weird and, and fake feeling, I hand out the camera, the, the gym phone to the, the, the class after it's done. They'll set up their own silly poses. They'll do their own TikTok reels. They'll do their own Instagram, whatever. All you do is like give them the phone and open the app and here you go. And um, this is like the best testimonial there could ever be. Even in some cases where some of the younger coaches were like trying different tricks with the kids and the kids were filming it, that was awesome too, okay? So showing them off on social, you don't have to do this yourself. You don't have to have great photography. You just need a photo release and to hand the camera to the kids in your teens class. Next is to invite a team for testing. So one thing that we've done very effectively over the years is we've asked our teens, like, what sports do you play? We've contacted their coach. And then we have said, 
either, hey, Jimmy's been with us during the off season. Here's the progress that he's made. And this is just an email. It doesn't have to be a formal chart. Um, I just wanted you to know as his coach. And when the coach responds, then you can say, you know, talk about your program or whatever if you want to, but you're just trying to get the information to the coach. But the other thing that you can do is take it a step further. Now, if you have a team and uh, we've done this with cross country skiers, for example, we've said, hey, look, we've loved having Jimmy in our program over the summer so much. We want to do something nice for him. And so we thought if you wanted to, we could bring your team into the gym and do some preseason testing. And we have done this with skiers so many times. Uh, we've done this with figure skaters, obviously hockey players. We've definitely done this with basketball. I can remember doing like a combine for football, baseball for many years. And, um, you know, basically what you're doing is you're adding value to their program. So now the coach gets to say, yeah, we include this fitness testing, a catalyst before the season. And the parents see all this extra value from the program and um, the coach doesn't have to do anything. You're not charging for this, this is lead gen for you. So you're getting everybody's name and email address and making sure that you're in constant contact with them, especially the parents. Another great one is to host a free seminar. So you can say to the coaches, look, I know you wanna to talk to your kids about not drinking three Red Bulls before practice or like what to eat to prepare them for a game. And maybe you don't feel comfortable with that, but we do that for free. Would you like us to come in and talk to them? And um, so we had, for example, a hockey school hired me to come in and talk to like five different age groups one time. And I got so many leads that I actually sent the guy back the check that he had paid me to come in and talk because we were just getting so many clients from this. And all it takes is a reach out. Like you're helping them. Remember that you're doing them a service. You're helping the kids, you're helping the parents, you're helping the coaches. And um, so you should feel like you're doing an act of generosity here. Next, send letters to sports teams. I mean, this just sounds so basic. And it, uh, to some people, it'll sound kind of uncomfortable. But what you're really doing is you're sending a one page letter to different coaches or organizations or even teams. And you're saying, here's what we do. And here's our rate. Just putting that in front of them. A lot of the times we'll have people sign up. And I can remember specifically the coach of one hockey team saying, we know there are five or six other coaches in town who do what you're doing. You're the only one that reached us out to us with a letter on professional letterhead with an actual price. You just seemed so much more professional than everybody else. We wanted to do this. We had a budget for it, but we didn't even know where to start the search. So most people in this case, they, they do have a budget, especially if it's like a rep team or a traveling team, and they're just going to defer to their buddy, or they're going to hire some kid to come in and do their training, unless they know that you're out there, that you're a professional and what your rate is. Okay. Another great one is to target fringe sports. So in my town, there is a ton of competition for trainers who want to coach hockey players. They think it's their ticket to the big time if they train somebody who turns pro, but they ignore these fringe sports. And there are so many of these fringe sports. I mean, motocross, right? Um, wrestling, wrestlers need to lift weights. Uh, for us, it's like cross country skiers, downhill skiers, but nobody targets the long distance runners. And I know that you know how to help those, those kids. Uh, so target the fringe sports, you know, ask your kids, what other sports are you playing? Swimming, amazing, right? Like swimming is such a, a big sport for travel, downhill skiing. These are crazy expensive sports where if you're adding training on top of the price tag already, it's barely even a blip for the parents, all right? Another great one is just to stay in front of them. And so you might be talking to a kid and the parent says, ah, oh, they're in season right now. But if you keep talking to them through email and you keep that conversation going, they're more likely to sign up when that season ends. OK, so that's really, really important is you need to stay in contact with the parent, not just the kid. While the TikTok and the Instagram stuff is great for attracting the kid's attention and making it look good. Uh, the parent is probably paying attention on email, not TikTok. However, I will say this. I was at a birthday party for a niece this weekend and a teenage nephew said, the gym I go to is packed. These guys live an hour from me. He said, uh, TikTok and Instagram have done more for the gym business than anything else ever. And so what he's seeing are young guys, age 19, showing up. Yeah, they're taking their Instagram photos, but all their friends are coming to that same gym too. However, the parents probably aren't responding to that. So you want to have the parents on your email. 
the next one is um, answering common questions at scale. So if, for example, uh, somebody asked you a good question about training their kids, like, hey, Chris, isn't weight training going to stunt my kids' growth? What I would actually do is uh, write a blog post about it. And then you've got something that you can send to everybody else who's asking that question. And it'll reach people who aren't in contact with you to ask that question. Nutrition is another really big one, right? So um, the example that I use in this guide is a very specific one. We were playing these teams that were kind of better than us, but we would play them at 7 a.m. And my kids would show up with a ton of energy. Their kids would show up with a box of donuts and our kids would smoke them at seven. Now, if we played that same team at 8 p.m., we would get our butts handed to us. But instead, what the parents were asking me from the other team was like, hey, Chris, how are your kids showing up with so much energy? And I said, oh, we've got this like one pager um, that I give to the kids and their parents at the start of every season called how to feed a hockey animal. And of course, all the other teams that heard about it wanted this thing. So I just made a free download on our site and people could ask me for it. And I started sharing it in public Facebook groups in our city. And that was a great lead magnet for us. But the key to all of this, and you can download this free guide and get all the step-by-step -step processes. The key is communication. You need to know exactly who your clients are, exactly what they're doing when they leave your gym and look for opportunities to help first. That's why my book, Help First, also has dozens of other ways that you can approach these conversations. But what's really important is that you're always looking for ways to add value to your clients and to help the people around them. That's the key to growing your kids program and growing your gym. Hope this helps. If you want to download this guide, go to gymownersunited.com and just ask for it. We're happy to give it to you. There's a link below this video that you can click on.